Astronomers are reporting some big discoveries far out in space, more planets resembling our own. They say the planet-hunting Kepler Space Telescope has found eight more Earth-like planets circling distant stars. That boosts the odds that life might exist on other worlds. Let's learn more now from Jeffrey Kluger, editor-at-large at Time Magazine. Good morning. Good morning. That's eight new planets. Eight new planets. And what's significant about these planets, Kepler has discovered f more than 4,000 calories candidate planets and more than a thousand that have been confirmed but these eight orbit in what's known as the Goldilocks zone and it's a perfectly named term because it describes that place around a sun where it's not too hot <laughs> not too cold just right for the existence of liquid water which in it to, for life as we know it is a prerequisite there are two planets, Jeffrey, that, that astronomers are particularly interested in. They're, call, they're called 438 and 441. What is it about those two? Um, well, first of all, it's not their glamorous names. Um, but what it is is the fact that they are relatively small. 438 is only 10% as big as Earth. I mean, 10% larger than Earth. 441 is 20% larger than Earth. Mm -hmm. That means they're small enough to be rocky planets with habitable surfaces. If you're going to live on a planet, you need, you need a place to live. This isn't like, say, Jupiter and Saturn that are giant gas balls that really wouldn't have a habitable surface. I think we can forgive them for the numerical names because of yes, Goldilocks. Goldilocks exactly. makes Goldilocks up for it. Goldilocks makes up for it. But, you know, the reality is, at least the New York Times is saying, we will probably never know any more about these particular planets than we do now. So how do we move forward? Well, I think the New York Times is being a little pessimistic here. The reason they say we won't learn about them is because they're so far away right. that it's almost impossible to resolve the planets themselves exactly. You can't really see see them. Instead, Kepler detects the presence of planets by looking for the slight dimming of starlight when the planet moves in front of the star. But when we have what are called star shade telescopes that can sort of block out a little bit of light from the star, you may be able to see these planets in the same way you would now be able to see a little moth against a street light if so, you hold up your hand. So the hope is with even better, more powerful telescopes, we may find planets closer to us? Well, we can already find planets closer, closer to us, but what this means is we'll be able actually to see them telescopically, visually. It really is fascinating. Jeffrey Kluger, thank you so much.